Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the mocking framework RhinoMox. This is going to be an introductory overview on how to use RhinoMox. This is a similar screencast to the previous one we've done, which is Introduction to Mock MOQ. Uh, if you're not familiar with mocking, it's a, it's a testing concept or testing uh, tool that will allow you to remove dependencies from your unit test and allow you to do more granular unit tests. Let's go ahead and get started. To save some time, I've already created some code. I have a class here, it's called my emailer, and essentially it's going to be responsible for creating and sending emails. And I've got a method called send batch emails, which would, in a real scenario, go out and grab a bunch of email addresses here and iterate through them and call into my email service, which is right here. And the email service will just pretend to send emails. Since we're not actually worried about sending emails, I'm just going to set the return false. And my email service does implement an interface, which allows me to do contract-driven development as well as create a better and easier uh, testing environment. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do is create a unit test that did not include mock. I'm using the end unit testing framework. You can obviously use any testing framework you want. Now without a mock, what we're actually be doing is do an integration test. I'm going to create an instance of my new email service, create an instance of my emailer, provide my emailer my email service because I'm doing constructor injection here. I'm not using depend inversion of control or dependency injection container. I'm just doing manual injection at this point. And then I'll do something like emailer.send batch emails. Now let's put a breakpoint right here and let's run this. I'm using the Resharper test runner. You can obviously use the test runner that's built into any unit or your testing framework or testdriven.net. Anything will get the job done works. And basically if I step into this, you'll notice that I'm actually now going to be stepping through the actual code. Not everything will actually fire. I'll step into the email service. Because it returns false, I'll actually throw an exception. Well, I have some extra dependencies right here that I don't care if it works or not in my send email test. So I actually want to mock those dependencies out real quick. So let's go ahead and try this now using a mock. So I'm going to create something very similar. And with Rhino mocks, you have this thing called a mock repository. That is the, essentially the mocking engine, if you will, that RhinoMox uses. So basically, just create, create yourself a, a new mocking repository, and then you're going to want to create some, uh, some mocks. The first thing I want to do is actually create a mock of my email service. So I'm going to call this var email service, mock email service. And I'm going to create the mock through my mock repository. In this case, I want to create a, a strict mock. So I'm going to do create mock and give it my interface. There you go. And RhinoMox uses the record replay semantics. So I'm going to go ahead and do using mock repository that record. And now I'm going to record all my expectations here. So I'm expecting that when I call my mock, my email service, it's actually just going to return true form. So I'm going to do ex expect call and now I'm going to do mock email service. So I'm making a call onto my email. I'm going to do send email. Uh, for now, I'm just going to do empty strings and tell the mocking engine to ignore arguments. So that by saying ignore arguments, no matter what I put in here will be ignored. It's irrelevant. If I left this off, when the mocking engine actually accepts that call, if the parameters are not equal, it'll actually throw an exception. Let's do return true. And we'll we'll do repeat up any. So we don't care how many times this repeats. So now I've set up my expectation that some somebody will call this service some number of times. Let's go ahead and create my emailer. And since I have to pass in a email service, I'm going to give my mock email service. And I'm going to use the replay, so using mock repository. 
playback. I'm going to say emailer that send batch emails. Let's put a breakpoint right here. By putting this call inside this playback, I'm going to make sure that at the end of all my, my calls, that this was called at least one time and returns true every time. Let's go ahead and run this. If I F11 into this, I'm iterating through all my emails, and now watch, when I hit F11, it is not going to step into my email service. It's just going to return true. Now let's hover over this real quick and look. My email service is actually an iEmail service proxy with the GUID on the end. That tells me that that object has been mocked out correctly. So I turn true every single time. Let's hit F5, and when I'm done, my test should pass, and it does. Now, what we've just done there is we've actually just removed our dependencies. So we've actually said that, hey, I don't care about the email service. I don't care if it actually works. I'm not testing the email service right now. I'm actually testing the logic that sends batch emails. So I've just removed an extra dependency, which will allow me to create cleaner tests and more isolated tests. Now, what would happen if I wanted to test that the email service through some kind of exception? Now, how would I do that without mocks? Well, I'd probably have to disconnect from the LAN. Maybe I'd have to turn the email, the email server off. Well, with mocks, I can do that very easily. I can actually just tell the mocking engine, hey, when you get called, throw an exception. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and save some time, and I'm going to copy and paste some of this code from above. Now, instead of saying send email, ignore arguments, return true, I'm going to say ignore arguments, throws, new, and let's just say exception, and I don't care what's in the exception method message. So what I've just done now is I've said anytime this gets called, immediately throw an exception. So the rest of it will be pretty much the same. So let's go ahead and borrow code from above. Let's put a breakpoint right here again. And let's try running this. Step through this. Now, as soon as my email service gets called, it's going to throw an exception, and the unit test thinks it should do something about it. But what I've just done is I've told the mocking framework that when you get this call, throw an exception. How else do I test that, that edge condition without a mock? Very painful. So mocking allows me to very simply test that edge condition. So that pretty much wraps up our quick overview on how to use Rhino mocks and how, in an introduction to mocking. What we've learned today is we've learned what the mocking repository is. It's essentially a mock engine inside of Rhino mocks. We've created a strict mock. There are three different kinds of mock. There's strict mock, loose mock. A loose mock is... If you don't mock out the method or set an expectation on the method, it will return the default for that given method. And there's a, a dynamic, which is a dynamic mock for in Rhino mocks. There's also a partial mock, which is only used on concrete classes. It's pretty powerful, and that will be a subject of later screencasts. But a partial mock allows you to mock out some methods on an object, but not others. We've learned how to use the record semantics and the, the playback semantics. So here we're actually recording our expectations. Here we're actually verifying that they were actually met. We've learned how to set it up to throw an exception anytime it was called. And we learned how to do a return value so we don't actually step into the logic. So there you go. I hope you learned something today. And uh, stay tuned for future Rhino Mock screencasts as there should be more to, more to follow. Thanks a lot.